Hey, Dennis Tubergen here with another economic update. Uh, today is the 23rd of February. It's Friday. And as we go into the weekend, I want to chat with you a bit today about debt. Uh, you know, when uh, I wrote the book, New Retirement Rules, one of the overriding themes in the book is that uh, when there's too much debt to be paid, it can't all be paid. And since banks primarily have debt as assets, uh, it will lead to more banking failures and it will lead to uh, uh, asset prices resetting, namely stock markets declining and bond markets declining. So I want to talk to you today about debt and uh, really some pretty uh, shocking stats that you uh, may not hear um, on the uh, mainstream media here in the U.S., this article actually is from The Telegraph, and one of my favorite uh, economics reporters is Ambrose Evan Pritchard, who wrote this article. And you see on the, on the screen, the title is, World Faces Wave of Epic Debt Defaults, Fears Central Bank Veteran. The situation is worse than it was in 2007, says the chairman of the OECD's review committee. Uh, and I'll give you just a little bit from the article, and then I want to share with you a couple other supporting uh, articles also. And then we'll talk a little bit about what this might mean for you. Um, the global financial system has become dangerously unstable and faces an avalanche of bankruptcies that will test social and political stability, a leading monetary theorist has warned. Big stuff. Test social and political stability. Uh, as a result of this avalanche of bankruptcies. William White um, said that the situation is worse than it was in 2007. Our macroeconomic, macroeconomic ammunition to fight downturns is essentially all used up. I'll talk to you more about that in a second. Debts have continued to build up over the last eight years, and they've reached such levels in every part of the world, they've become a potent cause for mischief, he said. It'll become obvious in the next recession, not if we have another recession, but he says it will become obvious in the next recession that many of these debts will never be serviced or repaid. That was the point of my book. If debt levels get too high to pay, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out that they won't be paid. And this will be uncomfortable. That's a nice word. I would use the word devastating. And this will be devastating for a lot of people who think they own assets that are worth something. The only question is whether we're able to look reality in the eye and face what is coming in an orderly fashion or whether it will be disorderly. Debt jubilees have been going on for 5,000 years. So basically, Mr. White says that not all this debt will be paid and there will have to be some type of jubilee. Now, there was... Uh, CNBC um, uh, had an interview between uh, CNBC's Rick Santelli, uh, one of my favorite reporters, and Jim Bianco. And that interview is written about here uh, by Doug French, who is director, director of the Ludwig von Mises Institute in Canada. Now, this was about the time that the stock market was going crazy, but the beginning of this article says, in the past, if the past few stock market days are interrupting you, your sleep, Jim Bianco and CNBC's Rick Santelli are saying get used to it. The total assets of all central banks hit $16.4 trillion plus, an all-time high, and these banks now collectively own 33% of the world's sovereign bonds. Um, that's up to 14, from 14% before the 08 crisis. So basically, this is what this means. Debt levels have reached unpayable levels, and they've been there since 2008. There's nothing new here. The difference is that the debt is being financed by central banks simply printing money out of thin air. Central banks around the world now are realizing that that is not good policy. It will create inflation. And continuing this article, the second paragraph, Santelli's question to Bianco was, if the aggregate size of the world's central bank is at an all-time high, and these banks have purchased a third of all government paper, Will these banks be able to normalize in size? In other words, will they be able to shrink without going through a lot more stock market anguish? Bianco's response was a flat no. This, I believe, as do a lot of folks, is irreversible. And there will be debt defaults, and that will be deflationary, and real estate and stocks do not like deflation. Think about it. A third 
of all government debt around the world is now owned by central banks who printed money to buy it. To use a country phrase, that ain't normal and it can't continue. My advice would be, just in case central banks decide to keep printing, I want to have tangible assets in my portfolio. If they stop and we have deflate deflation, I want to limit my losses from stocks and real estate. That's today's economic update.